What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Part 2, please relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, you could subscribe our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. Nutty Putty Cave in Utah was sealed up in 2009 after John Jones was trapped upside down in a small crevice while spelunking. When rescue teams finally arrived, he had been upside down for so long that his legs were drained of blood. The only possible way to have gotten him out was to break his legs, which would have sent him into fatal shock. He died after being trapped for 28 hours. His body's still in the cave. Account 2. My mom was driving and a guy ran out in the road so she stopped so she couldn't hit him. It was nighttime, so it was pretty dark out. And three other men emerged from the forest around, all trying to use the door handles of her car to get in. She locked them, luckily, and gassed it to the nearest town. Remember to always lock your car after you start it, because if it wasn't unlocked, who knows what would have happened to her. Count 3. The 1904 Cincinnati Privy Disaster In 1904, nine schoolgirls drowned in an outhouse after the floor collapsed. They literally drowned in human waste. Account 4. Amateur Rugby Guy gets hit pretty hard and dislocates his hip. While waiting for the ambulance, a guy runs up saying he's a physio and can at least relocate the joint. He cracks the hip back into its socket and the guy screams. One of his testicles had been jolted out of place in the accident and had been chilling out in the empty hip socket. Account 5 Carol Dayranch was at a shopping mall in Salt Lake City in 1974 when she was approached by a man claiming to be a police officer. He said that someone had tried to break into her car and asked her to come with him. He then said he would drive her to the police station and she got into his car. However, this guy was not a police officer and he did not drive her to the police station but rather pulled into a parking lot. He then cuffed her, pulled out a gun and threatened to kill her if she resisted. Only he messed up. He meant to cuff both of her wrists, but only managed to cuff one. She escaped and fought him off despite being hit over the head several times. Her kidnapper was Ted Bundy. He killed another woman just four hours later. Her escape also helped identify Bundy, and she is part of the reason he was eventually arrested. Account 6. I used to work in a lab, and we had a compound that could go through gloves. I read the materials safety data sheet before I handled the compound something you're always supposed to do, and it warned that proper personal protective equipment should be worn and that the compound was a horrible, toxic carcinogen. Not knowing that it could go through gloves, none of us did. We began handling it. I got some on my palm and continued working. It only took like five seconds for my hand to feel warm and strange, so I removed the glove and there was a large splotch on my left palm. I immediately went to wash up, scared for my life. It went through my skin immediately, and it also targeted the nervous system, but I ended up being fine due to minimal exposure. I can't remember what compound it was now because it was so long ago, but it had a lot of P-words. Scary, scary stuff. There's nothing scarier than working in a lab and knowing you're doing everything right just to have it all go wrong. Account 7. Artemis Pyle. The drummer from Linard Skynard survived a plane crash and walked to a nearby house only to be shot by the homeowner. The homeowner saw a bloody long-haired man and winged him. Pyle survived that as well and made a full recovery. Account 8. I used to run the boilers in a DOE building. Apparently, at some point in the 80s, Three people were murdered over involvement in a big VCR theft VCR. It's meant for the school system had apparently been stolen out of this warehouse. It was an inside job. Something went wrong. The head custodian was found shot to death. And later the bodies of the other two were reported buried in Monticello. But word is, they had first been incinerated. In the boilers I was in charge of operating and maintaining. There were three operational boilers and one that wasn't in service. No clue which one was supposedly used, but when you're firing them up, you're typically the only person in the building. Not a single day went by that I fired them up and didn't wonder which one was used. But that wasn't what gave me the real Hebei jibes. You have to clean the interior of these boilers really well, otherwise the fire won't transfer heat to the water very efficiently. Especially with number six oil, these boilers would build up a lot of soot. You have to suit up in a Tyvek suit, wear a mask, and climb right into the firebox. 
I found myself staring down the business end of that burner many times, wondering what that panic would feel like. I'm reasonably sure these people were dead before getting put in the boiler, though. Once, I was actually in one boiler while another one was running. The valve that isolated my boiler from the main steam line wasn't holding, and by the time I realized how warm it was getting, it was enough to panic, trying to lift myself up and belly crawl through the small opening. The metal was almost too hot to keep my hands on for long. Definitely creepy experience, considering the history of that boiler room. Account 9. I spent my first 10 years in New Delhi. Back then, we would find dead women, burnt with acid or set on fire, and it used to be so normal. Like, oh, look, another one of those dowry cases where her family didn't pay the husband enough money, so they killed her. Many years later, I revisited those memories and realized how insane that actually was. I'd totally forgotten about all that. Account 10. Years ago, when I was eight, my family lived in this big, weird house kind of on the edge of a small town. The school district was in the middle of a big restructuring, so even though we were only a couple grades apart, my brother and I went to different schools and took different buses. This left me as the last person to leave in the morning and the first person to get home in the afternoon, which meant it was my job to make sure all the lights were off and the door was locked. One morning I noticed the basement door was open and the light was on, so before I left I turned off the light and closed the door. When I got home that afternoon, the light was on and the door was open again. I just assumed that I'd forgotten to actually take care of it when I noticed it in the morning, so I went over to turn off the light and close the door. When I got to the top of the basement stairs, I looked and there was a big, shadowy male figure towards the bottom of the staircase. I freaked out, slammed the door, and pushed a bunch of boxes against it, and then went and hid in my closet. For months, I didn't tell my family because I was positive what I had seen was a ghost and didn't think anyone would believe me. Then, about a year after that incident, my mom and her boyfriend realized that small amounts of money had been going missing for months, totaling around $800, $900, but never more than $60 at once. So we all walked around the house with flashlights trying to figure out how they could have gotten in. Turns out some creep was climbing in through a small hole in the outside of the house, shimmying through a crawl space, then coming up into the house through the basement. Realizing I had been alone in the house with him on at least one occasion was one of the worst, most terrifying moments I've ever had. Account 11. My wife called me while I was at Walmart one day. She had a broken ankle and had just had surgery on a hernia. Her mobility was like 5 out of 100, and of course someone tried to break in. Her saving grace was yelling through the door that she was on the phone with cops. Really with me? I'm on the way home. And I passed the guy to the exact description my wife gave me and the cops. I swerved his ass off his bike, hopped out the car, and sat my fat ass on top of him until the cops got to where I was. Guy had a gun, rope, lock tools. It could have been bad. Luckily, though, he ran. And with even more luck, we crossed paths. He could have went anywhere when he left my yard, but he came straight towards the Walmart I was leaving that was about three men away. Account 12. Baby Brianna, a newborn whose mother, father, and uncle tortured and raped her from the second they brought her home from the hospital until the second she died. Account 13. Guy goes into a small building and dies. Later, investigator shows up and sees the body, calls 911, and then dies. Paramedics show up to help them, then die. The reason? Oxygen levels at head height were normal. Oxygen levels went bent over was basically zero. Bending over in this room killed four people by asphyxiation. Edit, they could breathe. The air they were breathing contained no oxygen. The human body can't tell the difference. Account 14. The Lake Neos Disaster. The lake periodically belches a cloud of invisible carbon dioxide gas that suffocates everything within a 16-mile radius. In 1986, over 1,700 people and all their livestock died without even understanding what was happening to them. Account 15. This is a hometown story that stayed with me. It happened literally right around the corner from where I grew up, maybe a two-minute drive away. Judy Kirby murdered six children and one adult by intentionally driving the wrong way on a divided highway in an attempt to commit suicide. She had been hospitalized for depression, but had also just ended a relationship with her ex-husband's brother and was by some reports involved in drug trafficking and fearing an imminent arrest. She picked up her sister's son, who was celebrating his 10th birthday that day. She then loaded her three children into the car, supposedly to pick up a gift for the nephew. 
Instead, she went missing with the carload of kids. A short time later, calls started coming in to 911 about a car going the wrong way down the highway at a high rate of speed. They made it about 90 seconds before a head-on collision with another vehicle, driven by a father with two children and another child along for the ride. The crash annihilated both vehicles. The only survivors were Kirby herself and the child who was along for the ride in the other car. There were pieces of children all over the highway. She was sentenced to 215 years in prison.